All right, we're here to talk about one of the mainstays in the electrical industry, the Greenlee Gator EK425 uh, service tool. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk through a little bit of the history associated with this tool, the usage of this tool, uh, its overall versatility, and then a little bit of an, an expansion uh, as to the platform uh, in terms of it being a service-oriented tool. And when I mean, when I talk about service, uh, really what I'm talking about there is tapping on to utility lines um, and bringing power to somebody's residence or business, uh, so on and so forth. So overall, uh, back in 2002, uh, we came up with the first inline configuration of tool. Historically, all of the micro hydraulic tools that were uh, out in the marketplace since around Mid, the mid 90s, they were all in a pistol configuration or a suitcase configuration. So looking at ergonomics, we wanted to make it a little bit easier for access and a little bit easier for uh, the overall package and weight of the tool. So that's where the inline or the candlestick configuration came from. That was back in 2002 and we introduced it first with our Gen 2 uh, Gator product line uh, starting with the EK425. What you're seeing here is the Gen 5, uh, sorry, Gen 4 uh, application of the 425. And like I said, this tool is weighing in at about 3.1 pounds. And then when we actually fit it up with its jaws, this one is a crimping jaw, and then with our Makita battery platform, this thing comes in just over six pounds. So you can see that the overall application of utilizing something that is six pounds in overall weight and six pounds in overall pressure to activate the tool is much better than what used to be carried out from a manual perspective. So as you can see right here, we have the Greenlee K4250. Um, and this was literally what was used for decades within the utility industry as it relates to service drops. So come a long way. Overall package and overall strength needed uh, to articulate these tools. Two-handed, one-handed, they're about the same weight. But overall, the micro hydraulic application really changed the way uh, that this work is done. So taking the battery off to work with the jaw. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to go over here is the versatility of this tool. So what you saw that I used right here, this is uh, what we refer to as a D3 jaw. So this is a jaw that's primarily associated with splices or H taps, anything that you'd be using to lap onto uh, connect wires or to actually draw power from a wire, uh, thus the tap uh, reference. So all different uh, crimping applications. One of the other applications that we allow this tool to work with is the use of regular U dies. So these would be used um, from electricians' perspectives, uh, from number eight all the way to 600 for copper, uh, number eight all the way to 350 uh, for aluminum. So we have configurations that accept those types of dies as well that can be utilized in this tool. We recently branched out and allowed this tool to not only be a crimping tool, but a cutting tool. So what I have here is the Greenlee Gator ACSR cutter, our copper aluminum cutter, and then we also have a bolt cutter, uh, which works through with, with one-time lock, soft steel applications, things of that nature. But they all fit within this patented spring lock configuration, the spring pin configuration that we utilize with the 425. So breaking it down a little bit further is we'll take the cover, we'll take the, the hood off this guy and just kind of work through what makes this tool so, uh, so special. So like I said, working from the top down here, we have that spring actuated pin that has a confirmation all the way in, spring actuated all the way out. So you're not inadvertently going to bend over one of these forks uh, by not having the jaw all the way. Uh, inserted and then the pin securely fastened. So working down the tool, uh, one of the key, the key features that makes this tool so small, so light, so easy to use is what we call this orbital reservoir. So this is where the hydraulic fluid is actually kept and uh, it circles around the pump housing. 
So with microhydraulics, obviously you're using hydraulic force as opposed to mechanical force. Uh, and to do that, we need to have that hydraulic fluid in there, which then is taking advantage of our pump block, our transfer case, and then our motor, and then ultimately down here with the circuit board, and that's gonna interface with the Makita batteries that we utilize in our entire product line. One of the key features of this tool, though, is this line right here. It runs all the way from the pump block down to the circuit board. This is the key communication aspect of these tools. All of our crimping tools have this uh, pressure sensor, which is monitoring the pressure within this pump block 32 times a second. So it's continuously monitoring to make sure that this tool is doing exactly what it says it's going to. If it doesn't do it, the tool's gonna tell you. It's gonna give you an error code on the back of the tool on our LED screen back here. It's gonna let you know what's wrong with the tool, whether you're out of battery or whether you have uh, some, other, uh, some other type of situation that you need to take care of. But the tool is gonna to communicate. It's gonna tell you you did, did the job right, and if you didn't do it right, it's gonna tell you that there was an error. So, time for a little bit of expansion. Since this is such a highly uh, utilized tool in the marketplace, we wanted to broaden it a little bit in terms of uh, the usage. So we went uh, back to our vault and we pulled out one of the old pistol style uh, configurations of hydraulic tool. So what we did here is we went and got um, one of our lightest configurations uh, in terms of the pistol and we're weighing in just over six pounds without any of the battery or the jaws and then eight pounds uh, with with all of those attachments. But overall, the reason why we did this is that we uh, provided and got feedback from end users that they were looking for a little bit closer application. So as opposed to having a candlestick configuration where you're tipping the tool forward and ultimately you have a very narrow window of approach, this tool was used more often on the ground or with a pad mount transformers where they needed to get very close from their person and get a lot of access, you know, from a very close proximity to the body. So you can see the tool sits over the back of your or the front of your forearm as opposed to sitting out uh, in extended position from your forearm. So again, same capacities as the inline configuration, nice tight package, nice, very well balanced, um, articulating head 355 degrees, uh, and it has all of the intelligence that all of our battery tools do. Uh, do, especially with that pressure sensor and then the communication via the information screen on the back of the tool. So continuing to expand, we uh, developed our remote control platform. So this is the EK425. Again, no battery when you're working with the top of the tool. This is the EK425 LXR. So this takes all of the ap application that we just talked about in terms of our inline configuration, and it allows this tool to now be utilized from a distance. So this is a fiberglass insulated hot stick, and that hot stick would be attached here, like so. And then would be articulated with the use of our universal remote control. And so this is predominantly associated with um, states or municipalities that don't allow um, glove work. So they have to have some type of a minimum approach distance uh, that's utilized and that's carried out with hot sticks. But this tool becomes really valuable at that point. Historically, they would have to use manual applications to either crimp or cut uh, you know, the conductors. So now you have crimping, you have cutting, all in the same package. One tool can do all of the work. But overall, um, as we just kind of talked about here, extremely versatile, extremely ergonomic. Um, the kind of the stalwart within the uh, electrical industry in terms of micro hydraulics, the EK425 Greenlee Gator Service Tool.